Let's look at some do's and don'ts of composition now. Number one, do use the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is a very helpful guide to creating a nice composition and it's useful to have it in mind whenever you're taking a photograph. Helpfully enough, many cameras do have a grid display that uses these guidelines to divide the frame into three equal columns and three equal rows and thereby creating nine boxes. As you compose the shot, try to align the key elements of the image within the grid lines and especially on the intersections of these lines. This is going to give you a well-balanced composition. Do think about the aspect ratio when you shoot. Most people shoot using their camera's native aspect ratio, often which is 3 to 2 or 4 to 3, and then crop post-capture to create a more pleasing image. However, if you think about which aspect ratio, like a square, 16 is to 9, 5 is to 4, 3 is to 2, or maybe 4 is to 3 even, would suit the scene when you are shooting, you'll find that your images do look better. Do compose with color in mind, as well as the shape and position of the objects. Think about their color and how the colors are interacting with each other. A red object, for example, will stand out more from its surroundings and will usually draw in your eye far more than a brown or maybe a grey one. Also, colors from opposite sides of the color wheel have more impact on each other, giving the image a greater zing. A red object, for example, will stand out far more against a green background than it will on a brown one. Think of a tomato in your kitchen garden maybe. Do keep an eye on straight lines when you are composing an image. Keep an eye on the horizon and any other straight lines. For example, in architecture, the default position is to shoot with a horizon level and buildings looking upright. But there may be occasions when you want to tilt them for a more creative shot. If you do that, make sure that the tilt is obvious as making it look deliberate makes it more acceptable to our eye than just a slight tilt that could be interpreted as accidental. Do look for leading lines. It doesn't matter whether you are shooting a landscape or maybe a still life. Lines within the scene can help you draw your eye into the image. With a landscape, these lines could be formed by uh, maybe a footpath, fence, wall or even clouds. With a vase of flowers, for example, it could be a stray leaf at the base of the vase or a few long stems that could pull you in. Don't just zoom in when you see that interesting scene or the subject. Don't be tempted to just stay where you are and zoom in or zoom out with your lens. Have a good look around to find the most interesting angle. Don't forget the background. When you are concentrating on making your subject look good, it's easy to forget about the background. Before you press the shutter release, have a good look around the frame and make sure that there is nothing untoward. Check that there are no posts coming out of the top of your subject's head and that there is not an ugly piece of litter in the background and that you have a background that complements your subject. Fill the frame or cropping. If your shot is in danger of losing impact due to a busy background, Surround or crop in tight around your main point of focus, eliminating the background so that all the attention falls on your main subject. This works particularly well with portraits when you are trying to capture something more intimate and focused or are shooting in a busy location where what's around them would just cause a distraction. Filling the frame could involve you capturing them from the waist up or for more impact Fill the frame with just their face. Patterns are another subject that when capturing, you should fill the frame with. Align it up carefully to ensure that they are straight. Don't cut off the limbs. That's a big one. Keep an eye on the edges of your frame to make sure that the person or the animal that you are shooting or photographing hasn't had any of their body parts mutilated or chopped off by it. Sorry about that word. Cutting off your cat's tail or maybe your dog's ear or even part of your model's head 
will not only spoil your shot but the unintentional limb chopping can also pull attention away from what the viewer should really be looking at that's very distracting of course there are times when this rule can be ignored but for the most part pay attention to it it's important use frames frames have various uses when it comes to composition they can isolate your subject drawing the eye directly to it they can hide unwanted items behind it giving an image a lot of depth and help create context your frame can be man made for example bridges arches or even fences they can be natural like trees branches or even tree trunks or even human like arms clasped around a face maybe like this simplify know your focus or the point of interest having too much going on in your frame can mean the person who is looking at it just keeps searching for a point of focus and soon gets bored of looking when they can't find one this doesn't mean that you can't have secondary point of focus it just means that you should make every effort to make sure that they don't steal all the limelight 